Welcome everyone, it's Alex and Gary. Uh, let us know who's here, who's punctual. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're gonna wait a little bit and see who's gonna come on. Also, the, the camera is sideways, so I hope it's not showing sideways on Facebook. Uh, so let us know about that. We'll just wait till you guys come on. And if nobody comes on, we'll just have to be, well, obviously, because then you'll watch the, the, the rerun. Um, we'll just have to do it in good faith that it is. Oh, somebody came on. <laughs> Someone left. <laughs> Someone's on. Okay. Becky. Hi, Becky. Hello, Becky. Can you can you see us? I mean, obviously you can't. But as in, is the is the screen always vertical and not yeah. sideways? Hi, hi, Don. Okay, great. Cool. Okay, so you can see us. Awesome, awesome. Uh, it's super hot here, and we just come actually from the beach. So we're all beachy and sort of Sunday, Sunday night <laughs> natural. <laughs> Hi, Christine. Ah, it's so nice. It's so different to, to do it, to do the video now with, with Gary than by myself. Um, partner in crime. <laughs> yes, my partner in partner crime. Partner in detox crime. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so if you have, I'll, I'll sort of dive in and do a little bit of an intro and if you have questions, um, you know, just post them and then we'll, we'll scroll, I'll sort of let, let Gary speak and then we can, you know, stop and go. So whatever you want to ask, uh, please feel free. Cause I know that so many of you, um, struggle with either getting the husband on board or, um, hi Maria or you know it, it is always it's difficult to to do this journey with a partner because a lot of people don't um you know necessarily resonate or they're not ready or they're big time meat eaters or whatever it is i keep looking over there i should need to look over there um and so i know it's difficult but that's why i wanted to bring gary making my mucus free grocery list right now Woohoo! <laughs> thank you and um, so, yeah, I thought, you know, let's bring on the husband who bravely did the whole journey with me from the very beginning. Um, I don't know why. Hi, Joe. Why did you? Did I force you? <laughs> no, I didn't force, no, I didn't me. force you. I think, you know, we've over the years we've been. Wait, let me put it this way. What my friends tell me about when I met Alex is that. The first thing I told them was how great her cooking was. <laughs> so I think anyone whose cooking is as great as Alex's had to be a good reason to follow a route of journey with food and nutrition and ultimately detoxification. So yes, over the years, Alex has been telling me the story and I've been listening and understanding and started making a lot of sense this whole journey of detoxification. But when the push came, when the final crunch came, when we actually did, well, at least I did my first detox in December 2015, that was a very scary moment for me. I was quite nervous and very worried about um, what, was, what, I was, what was I giving up on? What was I going to experience? Would I be able to even do this? Um, I think you know, when we... Part of the detoxification is using enemas, but we had been doing enemas. Enemas have always been part of Alex's life since she was a child. Um, so I was introduced to enemas by Alex and that, you know, so that wasn't such a big deal. But somehow the eating only fruit and eating light vegetables, that whole detox journey that we started in December 2015, that seemed like a very scary thing. What did, yeah. what did we do exactly? Well, we started off kind of with the with the medical medium sort of diet. Um, even though I didn't I didn't do the whole supplement story because I didn't resonate with that. But we basically did fruit in the morning, 
fruit only, whereas normally it was fruit and muesli and, you know, things like that. So the old healthy. And, um, and there it was fruit only. And then it was um, salads for lunch, raw salad, big raw salad for lunch with um, sprouts and all of that. And then for supper, we would have a big detox soup with seaweed, which we actually went to... Um, to forage here in the ocean and so it was a lot of seaweed and a lot of light vegetables so that was pretty much the detox and then obviously three enemas a day yes yeah, so i think the, the 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 big the big thing for me on that a mind shift on that thing was going from drinking coffee which was i love my coffee and just doing coffee enemas so that was like a big right. shift yes yes because at the time uh, we we were doing any coffee enemas and um, <clears throat> which in the meantime I don't really recommend anymore unless you've got cancer or yeah pretty much I mean that's the only time you know if you're in a in an acute stage of cancer that's when I would hi Lisa that's when I would still recommend um, the coffee enemas but otherwise I much prefer uh, the lemon ones because they're they're also still very very powerful but the, the coffee enemas tend to um, give a punch to the liver. And I don't think that that's necessary, you know, in, in, in this whole process. You can detox gently. You can go, well, gently. The lemon ones are still very powerful, but they don't um, aggravate the liver. And also the coffee does aggravate the adrenals. <laughs> the kids are hopping around in the background. Um, so yeah, so we don't do coffee enemas anymore, but I mean, they, they were helpful. They were helpful at the time and, and we did benefit and, um, so yeah, so we did that detox for about six weeks. Yeah. Well, six weeks strictly. And then we sort of like carried it on. I think that's when then we, you know, at the time we still thought, wow, we did six weeks of detox. That's a long time, <laughs> you know, but I think the amazing thing was that I, I didn't have any intention or purpose behind that detox but somewhere during 2016 <clears throat> my work colleagues started noticing that I was losing weight well I obviously noticed first as my, my, my trousers started getting um, looser on my waist and um, as the course of 2016 went by I realized suddenly we didn't have a scale at the time so I think I used to weigh myself at the gym and I noticed that I was losing weight and Pretty much after a few months, I had dropped 10 kilograms, which was an amazing. And obviously, I think the most important thing is that I felt really great. Um, there was a whole new energy to me and um, being able to, you know, just feel a lot more alert and awake waking up in the morning. Um, and then I noticed as well that my running improved. I was able to run with a lot more strength as well. Yeah. Well, and, and I, yeah, and the whole energy thing definitely was a big shift because it actually allowed us, you know, typically Gary was, was obviously working in corporate and, and I mean, he still does for now, but, um, the whole, the whole energy thing made it possible for us to, to dive deeper sort of into our self exploration work because we weren't tired. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that was, exactly. you know, a lot of it. And because now we had more time, um, I just want to see, is there any questions? Okay, just let me know. Um, and then ultimately, you know, we kept, because we felt so good and because I kept seeing results, because obviously I was doing it really for health issues, um, we then kept pushing it further and further. And when after the medical medium, which it helped a lot, but I also felt there was a plateau. There wasn't really movement moving forward and so yes i probably felt 50 percent better but ultimately it was like okay i want more clearly there's more to be to be detoxed and that's when i found um, dr morse and arnold eretz work and ultimately then the master fast system so we had started to to go you know from the medical medical medium into mucus lean definitely but we're still struggling with the back and forth or with this idea that, you know, being mucus lean all the time was extreme and that um, it was okay to every now and again have, you know, I mean, what was our usual, like our usual was like croissant or we would go for a pizza 
Yeah, well, our usual, actually, that reminds me something important on that, that detox. Our usual was, um, we were still eating eggs at that time. Oh, our yes. usual was scrambled eggs. Yes. And somewhere during the, oh, so we, 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 did, we did the detox for a week or two. And somewhere on maybe week two or three, I decided I would have some scrambled eggs. And I had a very interesting experience. I had the scrambled eggs in the morning, and that night... I was sick as a dog. I was vomiting. I basically think my body decided that no more eggs for me. I mean, I have probably tried eggs a couple of times since that, but just not quite. Yeah, you know, they wasn't stopped a, doing... They just really stopped doing its work for me. So that was really interesting experience that basically my body kind of taught me stuff and I think that's that's for me has been the biggest learning of this whole detox journey is that for me it's been a it's been a journey into my own body um, and it's kind of correlated as I detoxed I found myself being able to exercise more and enjoying exercise for me exercise never really was an easy thing I actually didn't enjoy exercising and over the last two two and a half years um I've fallen in love with exercise and fallen in love with running um, and I notice that whenever I do start a detox period, um, my running improves vastly. I get a lot more strength and I have a lot more endurance. Um, so that was an interesting experience. I think what I'm trying to say is that the, the detox experience really is a journey into your own self and discovering um, that which you do your body needs or that you don't um yeah what 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 your body actually needs so for me it was yeah i mean i, I think also at that time our, our yoga practice really started as well Dur during the detox period we really yes. started a, a serious practice of every morning doing at least half an hour of 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 yoga i mean my my goal for 2018 is now to really build more muscle um so that's a whole nother process. So, and I've got to overcome my lethargy and my aversion to kind of pushing through the hard work of actually lifting some weights and lifting my own body weight and sort of getting on the path. But I can feel a shift. So with every time you do a detox, there's a shift in consciousness for me. I felt that my consciousness shifts. I discover things about myself which I never knew before. So... I mean, I think we can talk about that led us into doing the Master Fast in September 2016. Yeah, yeah. So from that from from that journey into you know the whole. Well, maybe before we do that, Lisa's asking, what type of exercise do you recommend? Oh right. Well, during detox, you don't really you know during detox, you're not going to really build muscle because building muscle takes energy, and you obviously want to use that energy to strip the body because healing takes energy so while you're detoxing the ideal and that's why we're going to incorporate yoga videos into into this group and eventually this group is going to become a portal so we have a kundalini yoga teacher that we're working with um, simply because kundalini yoga we've tried a lot of different yoga kinds and gary was deeply into kundalini yoga before me and i never really got it um, because it seemed it seemed strange uh, a lot of you know weird movements and repetitive and so forth but then once I really understood the science behind it and it's it's got tremendous science behind it and the complexity that it really works on the body on spirit on heart opening on the lymph system so it's amazing for detoxification because eventually for me it was like okay i know i need to move my body in a way that detoxes the body i didn't want to do exercise for the sake of doing exercise or for the sake of you know building muscle because that wasn't the focus i wanted something that was going to further help my body detox and uh, rebounding is great so we do we do jump on the trampoline with the kids because they have a big trampoline and you know so it's a great way to interact with them but um, and and doing 10 15 minutes daily of rebounding is amazing for the lymph system and if you do then it's not really about jumping high but it's about just gently bouncing on the rebounder because that is what gets the lymphatic system flowing and moving so I think yeah I mean I think a number of my friends asked me, yes, but can you still exercise while you're detoxing or fasting? 
And my answer has been yes. I mean, yes, there, there certainly were days during the fasting periods where particularly, obviously, when you dry fasting, you feel quite miserable. And there might be moments when you're actually going through a bit of a detox healing crisis. Sure, on those days, you're not going to feel like exercising. But in the middle of the master fast, um, I was still running my 15 kilometers a week, three times five kilometers pretty much was what I was doing. And then I actually ran an eight kilometer night race during the middle of the master fast. And I felt great and I felt strong. So I think, you know, concerns and fears about, you know, do I have to give up exercising? I'd say no, but you may have to modify that exercise sometimes during the fast. Well, and it depends, you know, I mean, Gary, Gary is strong as a bull. And so he never, I've never seen, I think if I've seen him sick twice in my, in, in, in our life together, uh, you know, that's a lot, but, um, we, so I, I was a lot weaker and there was a time where exercise, you know, other than really five minutes of rebounding or five minutes of yoga, that was all that I could do. And so depending on where you're at with your health, obviously, if you really are in, in, a, in a poor state of health, you're not going to do well exercising for a while. And then I really had to build up my strength little by little. And yet years prior, I was, I was always you know, bodybuilding and doing a lot of hectic exercise. And so it was very humbling to then have to really start from scratch and, and you know, literally doing um, 10 sec, well, five second planks and, and, you know, very, very slowly starting to do exercise. But the point is the body is cleaner, the cleaner it gets, the quicker it actually then starts to rebuild itself, which that whole process is miraculous mm -hmm. in itself. Becky says, so when exactly would it be good point to bring light weight lifting back in? So the weightlifting you really only want to do kind of once you see in, in the process of detoxification, what we do is we first strip the body down and you know, whether you do that through the process of mucusless and then eventually doing a period of fruit only or the master fast or fruit only the master fast fruit only. So you kind of dance and I'll talk about that more in detail in another, in another video, but essentially you dance around with these different methods, which is just like you're turning up the dial of intensity and you know, dry fasting is sort of like the top dial of intensity. Master fast is the next dial of intensity right below the dry fasting. Then there's fruit fasting. Then there is, you know, fruit and raw greens with very little oil and very little salt. And then there is um, the mucus lean diet. And obviously there's gradations um, there as well. So depending on where you need to be, want to be, because it is a progression, um, then it depends, you know, how far you're gonna strip your body down. But so in our case where we really stripped our body down, um, you know, quite far. I mean, Gary also, like after his first yeah, master so fast. After the first master fast, I then lost another five, six kilograms. By then, my work colleagues were saying, what are you doing? But they were what's very, happening? what's happening? They were all very interested, very interested in the master fast. At that point in time, um, the master fast had become, I mean, yeah, let's say starting the master fast was another scary um, adventure um, but day two and three were probably the hardest and after that you get into the rhythm and um, sure I mean sure the food fantasies that one has during the master fast are quite extreme and quite interesting like we would sit there what would we eat now if we could um, but only the first fast sure generally, actually yeah, mainly the first fast I mean I think it's been a progression over having done three master fasts now there's been a progression I can talk about that just now but I think during the first master fast um, yeah my colleagues really noticed that I had lost a lot of weight everyone was then very intrigued what I was doing uh, obviously people couldn't comprehend that it, I'd been not eating for a week two weeks. Um, I only did 21 days, so that's three weeks. But still, it was quite an incredible process. And the, and the master fast that we did in September 2016 was very intentional. We wrote down a list of goals that we wanted to achieve. So I think the important thing is that, yes, the master fast works on the physical level, but you certainly get a whole new understanding of 
the emotional and mental level. And then there's also a very deeply spiritual component. So, you know, one of the things which I only realized after the fact was I had an intention relating to my career and a new job. And I did the master fast and on day 21 when I quit the master fast was the day I actually saw the job advert for the current job that I'm now being employed in for, for this past year. So for me there was a correlation between this intentionality around the master fast and then this great new job which I got. So master fast is for me amazing. Um, it does seem extreme but it's very doable and as I said I still ran my races during the master fast um, but yeah it was life transforming and I think one of the most important things I got out of it was it reset my relationship with a lot of things with um, coffee so from going to from having coffee every single day I then would have coffee now and again and yes it's easy for me personally to slip back into the everyday coffee not so much because of the taste of the coffee but just the sort of ritual of driving to work and stopping at the coffee shop grabbing a cup of coffee i sort of enjoy that sipping a hot coffee while i'm stuck in traffic um, and i'm sure many people can relate to that but each time i did the master fast i would get like a reset of my consciousness and awareness around drinking coffee eating food the cravings that one has um, now, over the years, I mean, I remember many years ago where I would eat a chocolate bar at 2 p.m. every day because that's kind of, you hit that, you need that sugar rush to kind of get you through the late part of the afternoon. Don't have that anymore, but these sort of understandings of how the addictions we have to certain foods really get presented during the fasting process. And then also my, you know, years ago, it was really a glass of red wine every night with with dinner and over the last few years I mean I still like red wine but I've noticed that it's definitely decreased 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 so now it's it's only for special occasions and it's um, even then well actually now this year I'm pretty much committing to you know no alcohol um, certainly no gluten no um, and we're going completely vegan but all of this was it was a progression it was not something I could have jumped into two years ago but it's been a progression over time and it's got easier and easier um, to start you know, to do this do this detoxification so yeah just to, to finish the answer and, and please you know if you've got questions of any kind um, you know shoot them uh, so you're saying yeah when to bring lightweight with lifting so after you're done stripping the body, then there's a rebuilding process. And that period, you know, it can vary. I mean, I would say I was stripping my body down for a good two years, 15, 16, 17, yeah, two and a half years, I was stripping the body down. And there, you know, we're all different because I think I'm a little bit slower with things and I, I, I kind of like, I like to take my time and I like to feel into things. And so I wasn't in a rush. Uh, and I really went deep and just allowed myself to went to go deep with this whole process and other people maybe they need to or want to blast through and then that's different um, so saying what is the master fast I've done the three-day detox and 125 hour right fast. I will speak about the master fast so the master fast is is simply it's another protocol um, in my opinion it's the best fast that is out there the best systematic fast and it's basically, it's, um, it's dry fasting, daily dry fasting, and then you drink pasteurized grape juice, which obviously everybody goes like, why on earth would you want to drink pasteurized grape juice? That's dead food. But there's a specific reason for it. And I will do a whole um, video on, on, um, on the Master Fast on its own because, um, you know, it's, I've been working with it for two years and I really feel that I have a deep understanding of the Master Fast. And at the same time, I don't share all the views that they are promoting in their group. You know, and that's natural. I mean, obviously, I sort of pick things that resonate with me. And there's a, I have a, there's a certain philosophy that kind of like I follow, which is really the path of least resistance. And, and to always come back to self-love, to self-love. Because whenever we do that, 
that is where the highest learning comes from. And then naturally, and that's what we, we've seen, you know, we've never wanted to put ourselves into any boxes of we're not vegan, we're not um, raw foodists, we're not, uh, you know, becoming breatharians or any of that. We simply are living with constant awareness and consciousness, and that is our dedication. And our dedication is to truth as as in you know what is the truth of how do we find health what serves us and to really also honor all parts of life because you know and that's where gary actually is really good at sometimes pulling me back from i think i have that tendency coming from an eating disorder i have the the tendency to want to go radical and you know and then gary is the one who's able to soften me and to go you know what every now and again it's totally fine to give in to the desire of whatever having you know sitting i mean there's a beautiful little village here where we like to go and have an almond croissant every now and again with an almond cappuccino and it's okay you know there i would say while you are deeply healing and you want to really get better, I didn't do it in that period. But afterwards, when I really felt like, okay, wow, I mean, I'm 95% there, you know? Now I feel like I'm 100% there, but while, even while I was 95, I still, every now and again, we did do, you know, we did go and have an almond croissant and a cappuccino, fully knowing that, okay, this is not fully serving me right now, but it's serving on another level. And therefore, it's, it balances out, if that makes sense. And that we do have to make peace with all the parts within us. And that I'm very much against this very strict and radical. I mean, I am radical, but you know, there's still limits within that that radicalness. Um, and I mean, I'll, I'll I'll get to a really cool story, you know. But I, I want to let Gary speak rather. Yes, Christine had a question. She asked, um, what, "Were there any health benefits for? Did I have any health issues?" Oh. And what did the master fast help? So yeah, Chris, yeah Christine, um, I've had a, a long-term issue for many years with um, my lower back. And I, if I lie flat on my bed at night, um, I would get pins and needles in my right um, thigh. And pretty much I could not sleep lying flat on my back. I'd always have to sleep on my one side, either side. And it was on day eight of that first master fast. Um, we were sitting in bed one evening reading where all of a sudden I got like a bolt of lightning up my right leg, up my right side. And I actually was like a flash of white light, like lightning. I literally jumped straight out of bed and I felt an instant relief in the numbness in my right leg. It was such an incredible experience. Alex even said she saw like a flash. I of, saw the flash because I was in bed with him and... I saw this flash of light and him jumping up and holding his leg and going, my leg, my leg. And I thought, what is happening? And there was like this shift, something had shifted in my leg. And interestingly enough, it wasn't perfect. But since that master fast, um, I had well, no it more issues. Well, it actually got worse. It got uh, worse oh, yes, first. It got a little bit worse um, for a couple of weeks. And then an interesting thing took place. Um, I got like a on my skin on my basically near my my hip where where the thigh joins the hip i got this like red sort of welt that spread out over the um surface of the skin and then i realized that it had was like originated on the muscle my the muscle that was where i had the issue so some toxin must have moved up the length of the muscle come to the surface of the skin and spread out on the top of the skin and then it cleared up over a few weeks and that for me was one of the most dramatic experiences um, of the master fast. And really, since then, I have no more issues. I mean, I still feel a slight numbness in my at that muscle point, but I don't have any issues. I don't get the pins and needles. I don't have my, my leg going to sleep when I lie on my back. And all of that was as a result of the master fast. So for me, that was one of the most dramatic experiences sort of experiences of master fast that it could actually heal even a very physical um ailment such as you know pins and needles in a muscle so i don't you know where you had tried everything yes, before from rolfing to acupuncture everything, physiotherapist to 
to um, acupuncture, all kinds of things. Yoga. Over the years. Yeah. So that for me was amazing. Um, and it, it's really proof that if you create the right chemistry in the body, the body can heal itself of anything. We, I mean, I Absolutely. know that. And certainly the testimonials we see um, on the Masterfast group um, and just the, the, the testimonials of people in this group of how detoxing is changing their lives. I mean, it is for me amazing. And one thing I do know is that I'm very grateful and glad that I've now... Um, been introduced to this way of living and yeah i mean other than the benefits of you know keeping a, a healthy weight and not putting picking up weight yes i mean a couple of weeks ago we were on holiday and we were indulging in a few more foods that we normally wouldn't eat so yes i did put on some weight but since getting back into our lifestyle of being back home and sort of detoxing on a regular basis or dry fasting well within within a week basically and that also shows that the weight i mean we were still basically you know eating within kind of fairly within the mucus lean but um more salt and more you know like more chickpeas than normally or things like that and there we can see how immediately the body does respond and it's not even fat it's really water weight so it's the lymph system that starts playing up because it just goes I, I, I don't know what to do with this food I don't need it it's just uh, making me heavy and and then the minute that we go on all fruit it's amazing how very very quickly you know first of all like this flood of energy comes and into the body and and immediately all the water weight is lost and then you realize wow all these kilos that you think you've picked up it's not really fat, it's water. And it's, it's water because the lymphatic system struggles to handle all of this extra food and the heaviness, the density of the food that you don't really need. Um, there was another, wasn't there another no, question? No. Okay, she says, maybe I'll stick with yoga for strengthening right now. Yes. Look, I mean, quite frankly, I think yoga... Um, well, what I'm seeing is that the more that my body is is healing and regenerating, the quicker I'm actually building muscle. And without really major, you know, I mean, I do my Kundalini yoga in the morning, which is, it's not really muscle workout, you know. Um, I don't really do a lot of weights. Every now and again, I do a little bit of weights and I want to now start something because I want to try it. Um, to then see if it works really well in conjunction with this lifestyle to then promote it. But, um, kids, dogs running around. But, um, yeah, I, th I think ultimately all you really, really need is a good yoga practice or, you know, I mean, ultimately it doesn't even matter really. As long as you enjoy it, as long as you move your body in the way that brings you the greatest joy, which for us happens to be the Kundalini Yoga, but it could be hiking, it could be walking or anything. Mm. Um, yeah, so that's really on, on the exercise. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you have any, any questions, um, trying to see where shall well, we take another, it from there's here. There's oh. another story I can tell around fasting, which is interesting. One of the, and, and something that the men might, you know, be, be asking. Um, so yeah, one of the, one, one of the guys was asking me recently, what, what happens to your libido during the fast? And the, the, the truth of the story is that your libido does kind of disappear during the fast. Um, but the benefit after the fast, there, 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 there's much more, a much more kind of, I'd say, sensitivity and awareness and um, expansion. expansion. So all I can say is that the benefits of that decreased libido and the fasting is that it it's as i said it's not just only a reset on the physical level but it's a reset on all levels but actually during the fasting even though yes there wasn't there wasn't that libido um that base chakra libido yeah but it actually there was a higher chakra libido so there was a lot yeah, of so more it was more ethereal and there was yes. more sort of spiritual the the sort of connection the, the love making connection was much more sort of spiritual than that more base sort of physical it so allowed that, us to explore that aspect yeah. yeah yeah lisa's asking do you do meditation so yes we we do in our 
Kundalini meditation every morning. We before sometimes we, we practice a, a, a meditation, and there's various meditations that we do practice. Currently, we we practicing a Kundalini meditation, which is either three minutes or seven minutes or eleven minutes every day. We're doing this for forty days now. Um, so these are particular kriyas that we will then also suggest because they're very powerful and they really help, especially during the, the practice of fasting or especially the, during the practice of detoxification, to just sort of keep yourself aligned and keep yourself every day, you know, showing up for the work that you need to do. Because obviously this whole journey into detoxification requires a lot of presence. You, you can't just, you know, disengage from the process of being aware and and initially you have to constantly work at being aware and which can sometimes be really tiring you know I remember like at, at first during the master fast like when do we get a break from just being so present so aware mm -hmm. and now it feels like now it's it's second nature you know and now we don't feel like we need a break we don't need to um, withdraw into unconscious behavior anymore yeah okay? and i think that's really you know and, and that's also it it needs to be a natural process and and by nature that natural process will take you into some behaviors where you then later go okay that wasn't such a good idea or that didn't really serve us or you know maybe we would every now and again say let's go out for vegan sushi and we'd be all excited, you know, like little kids being naughty, like, oh, we're going out for <laughs> vegan sushi. Um, and then we'd enjoy it. And then kind of like already the evening would be, you know, it was our date. And then come home being so tired and like, oh, what do you want to do? Should we, you know, have a massage? Or, no, too tired. And then like, well, actually, this didn't really serve us. <laughs> yeah, um, so it's been, it's been an interesting process. Um, but all I can say is that, yeah, it's been a worthwhile process and it's been an amazing process because one can certainly feel over the time a shift. And I'm very grateful for feeling so much more alive and energized and feeling a lot younger than my 51 years. I just turned 51 this past week. So I can only recommend this detox path to any anybody. Um, so yeah, all the... Husbands out there that might be watching, um, yeah, join your wife. It's not so scary. Um, it's very doable and there's incredible benefits to this detox journey. So maybe let's talk about, because obviously, you know, besides the physical and, and I actually need to dig up, there's a particular picture that I have in mind of Gary when I first met him and 11 years, 12 years ago. And he certainly looks way younger and healthier and ra more radiant than he did 12 years ago. So that's definitely like there's a radical shift. You know, he used to have really dark uh, rings under his eyes and those are no longer and, you know, his skin has improved. And so, I mean, there are a lot of actually little improvements that are there that, you know, maybe like he doesn't really even realize, but I certainly uh, do. Certainly the, the, do I have rings under my eyes? No. no. Yeah, so I think that for me was a big thing. I used to have these big sort of bags under my really eyes. Dark. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that's that's where, you know, a lot of the benefits have come through. And, and, and on, on the other hand, it's not like we're done. You know, we are only, what is it now? Um, well, four and a half years, you know, strictly speaking, when we started making the shifts. But then dialing up the tone really now in the last say two and a half years where we really went all in and so we know that there is still so much more to come like right now we are on fruit only which is is a whole other kind of story of yeah so that's been interesting for really the past week we've only had fruit yeah yeah and that's been great it's actually been so much easier than i imagined because in one of the previous fasts well we did it here and there yeah but there was a previously i found the fruit got too much yeah um, and this time it's it's so much easier i find the fruit and that you, you explain usually speaks of like when you don't like the fruit that tells you something 
Yeah, basically when you don't, when you refuse or when you simply don't do so well on high fruit, it's because your body is is not as balanced. It's basically, it's acidic. It's in, it's, it's not balanced. And there's a lot of obstruction and toxicity, which obviously the fruit is pushing through and it's bringing up and the body is trying to hold on to all the obstruction and then refuses the fruit. So typically what's interesting is when I work with cancer patients, is they hate the fruit and even more so they hate the grape juice so when I work with them and I try to put them on the master fast a lot of them really cannot stomach uh, the grape juice and to the point of sheer refusal and so it's interesting how you know almost the more toxic the body is the less it wants the fruit and then so there's a lot of also I think again on a mental level uh, an emotional level because it is all about embracing really the sweetness of life you know that tomatoes count as fruit yes they do that's the one thing yes. i still love to have now is my tomatoes because i do find the sweetness sometimes it gets a bit much and you want that sort of tartness of the tomato so yeah tomatoes yeah. count as fruit yeah tomatoes uh zucchini so i mean there's there's actually a lot of the vegetables cucumbers peppers they all count as fruit in fact anything that has seeds which obviously would also count eggplant and it, it does but i find eggplant is not so detoxifying and also typically when you're on in this lifestyle you will not really enjoy having eggplant but if you do you know you can toast it raw or dehydrated so that's something that you can use as an option um but as far as as also continuing this lifestyle you know it's really to see it as as a journey and you know i think especially when you don't have any real acute illness like for me now also you know i feel like i'm i'm healed i'm fine i don't have any any more health issue that i feel like i need to sort out um but now there's that curiosity now that i know what's possible i kind of more want to see well what more is possible you know what happens if we now do i don't know how long we'll go with the fruit a month or two months i mean the aim is you know sort of until the end of mango season basically <laughs> but um we just want to see what's possible and at the same time if in between you know we we go let's go and have you know i don't know what what may come up you know like even let's tonight have salad and hummus okay let's have it and let's see what happens you know like nothing is a big deal if you do it consciously and if you then are willing to consciously observe the consequences and also the reality is that the body can handle a lot you know and and the easy way of seeing that is when we look at obese people and we see them you know 50 60 years of age that the body can handle a lot and so in my mind is if I mostly which we do pretty much I mean the last two years I would say we've been varying between 70 to 80 percent fruit you know as right. much as we've still had maybe some gluten and we maybe still had a piece of fish here and there and whatever but overall that's been kind of you know our range and so if we stay within that range, if every now and again you go outside of that, you're actually going to be fine. Um, uh, Christina says, Alex, have, have you, you been, been an overeater? Oh, big time, big time. Uh, I mean, first of all, I was a bulimic for 20 years. And so I certainly used food. I mean, that's a whole complex story that I will definitely do another video on because, you know, many people have asked about that. I think we all struggle with eating disorder and you know in fact even Gary who certainly would be like the least eating disorder suffering person you know that I've ever met um, because he doesn't really have you know which is wonderful for me like he doesn't have any self-conscious body issues or you know like when I was 25 kilos more because I because I was when I was pregnant to him, I looked just as beautiful of as course. now. Of course. <laughs> and it didn't, you know, it was like it didn't even phase him. He didn't even notice. I didn't notice it. Why would one? So, you know, that's that's been wonderful. But what I'm saying is, 
so he doesn't have any issues of that sort. And yet I can still see, you know, you also have disordered eating in the sense that um, you'll go and give in to, you know, an urge unless I kind of, you know, it's kick got in. a lot better. I must admit that, you know, now yes. in the, since doing a couple of fasts and each time there is a reset of, rela of that relationship to food, I've gone from, you know, I do it now for me, whereas previously there might have been some times where I gave into my urge to have that almond croissant with my cappuccino on the way to work. And then I felt guilty about it. I was like, oh, I can't tell Alex. But usually I always tell her. Generally. Always. You always the truth, always, the comes, truth out. always comes out in this relationship. But, um, yeah, so it's got easier for me. And, you know, I'm making more and more choices about my eating from my own inner being rather than knowing that I can just rely upon Alex to kind of guide me and yes I wouldn't probably would not be on this path without Alex's wisdom and guidance and I'm very lucky I'm lucky that I'm married to a beautiful <laughs> woman who you know shows me the way on how to be healthy and in the process makes the most incredible amazing food so yeah, the your recipe book that's coming out this month is going to have some amazing things in it because wow, you got to come simple, eat simple. You got to come eat the food in this house. <laughs> it's amazing. So yeah, it's been a lot easier and I say each each round of sort of digging deep in detox shows me more about my relationship with food and my own self. So that's been interesting. Yeah. But to also just really make it make it pleasurable. And I think that's, you know, that's that has been my my gift. I mean, I still remember also when I started the master fast, um, I, I found a way even with the master fast of making the master fast juice pleasurable. And and so I would put like a little bit of cinnamon into the master fast. Mm -hmm. And then I figured and then I figured sort of my concoction where I, I put um grapefruit and an orange juice and then a little bit of sour cherry juice in there and the cinnamon and then that for me you know was like it was it, it took it to a next level so I refuse to suffer and simply because I feel like I've suffered so much from food and withdrawing or limiting my food intake but then on the other hand you know going overboard with it so I think when you ask are you an overeater I was never I never allowed myself to overeat sort of in public, you know, and that's why, I mean, that's why bulimia, eating disorder, it was, and obviously that, the, the deeper issue there was that I believed I can't have what I want, that my desire, my deepest desire, which food was just the, um, what do you call it, the symptom, or, you know, food was just the, 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 the outer symbol but from you know the from the depths within me I realized that what I believed was that I couldn't have what I truly desired and wanted and and so that showed itself in the food story but once I healed that and also with this whole process of detoxing and fasting and so forth to really go deeply into the story of you know sure I mean I can have Every day, if I really want to, I can have an almond croissant every day. And I can, I now know enough even to potentially make that work for me, you know, without picking up weight, without getting sick. But is that really what I want, you know, or am I substituting the almond croissant or the pizza or whatever it is for what I truly want? And so that is why, and I think for both of us, actually, that's been our, our process in the last, certainly in the last two and a half years, it, within our relationship and within our purpose, within living our purpose, it's been this process of stepping deeper and deeper into living our purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that for me is, that's also been incredible that with this whole detox process, a sense of much more kind of sense of purpose in what I want to do and achieve. Um, well, and for us as a relationship, I mean, it's completely, 
shifted our our relationship on so many levels and it's allowed us to um what are you doing reading the question <laughs> yes well uh, so we were saying that it, it it allowed us to go far deeper in our relationship yes. and to sort of like shift in many ways shift our relationship dynamic and and find a new way also of relating in a much deeper in a much deeper level yeah 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 so i mean yeah the 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 relationship that we have together has deepened as we've deepened this detox process and yeah. has so many things you could say yeah we've detoxed our relationship completely over the yes, past yes. two and a half years um some really major relationship stuff has really shifted in incredibly wonderful, amazing ways. And yeah, like there also we detoxed, you know, I mean, talk about detoxing shit out. <laughs> we detoxed a lot of shit out of our relationship. Absolutely. And that's been amazing and incredible. So yeah. How about medicine? Did you use them? And if yes, did you slow them down naturally? I used for my thyroid and arthritis. Um, no, we, no, we, we didn't. We fortunately didn't have any medicines that we were taking yeah well i always refuse medicine so you know i mean I, I was supposed to be on thyroid medication and a whole bunch of other things but i just simply always refused um so if you are on them then you know slowly get yourself off because depending on what you are on um they are i mean all medication really ultimately even supplements are so detrimental to the body because essentially the message that they're saying to the body is that you can't do it by yourself. You need outside help. And that's just a lie. But because surely if someone's on a medicine, it's not just that simple to stop thyroid and arthritis medicines. I mean, there must no, be well, a process. You know. they, well, thyroid, you know, depending on what you're on, you simply slowly reduce. Arthritis, you can just simply stop. Because arthritis is purely um, a, uh, the result of acidity in the body and of actually calcium leaking, in leaking, being leached out of the bones, probably because you've got heavy metal toxicity and probably because your body is so acidic. So then the body, clever as it is, pulls um, calcium out of your bones so that it creates a buffer between the acids and the rest of your organs. So arthritis, you know, as much as people always make it such a big issue and, you know, oh, I wonder where my arthritis comes from and so forth. And, you know, the worst thing you can do for arthritis is actually take calcium supplements. And, you know, whenever I step into a health food shop or, or pharmacy, I always hear the pharmacist and the health shopkeeper um, recommend calcium to somebody that's got arthritis. And I want to scream because that's the worst thing you can do because arthritis is purely a product of calcification in your body. So you simply there, you want to, um, you know, probably for you, fruit would be way too, um, too harsh to start with. I mean, have fruit in the morning, see how you go. But essentially, you want to, you want to start on, um, on celery juice. Like celery and apple juice because the celery juice heals the gut and and also draws toxins out um, so you want to do celery apple and cilantro or celery apple cilantro and parsley so a lot of deep deep greens that help detoxify the body and then simply move towards a more alkaline diet and that's going to take years because it ultimately, you know, we always have to remember one month of detox per year of eating the wrong foods. That is really what it is. And so <laughs> it's a journey. It's, it's a, journey. a journey. It's a journey. And, and, you know, make it, make it a pleasurable one and, you know, include factor in that you are going to make mistakes and that's okay. But sort of like keep eyeing, you know, that's where I'm going. And it's okay if I take a little detour here and there by basically, you know, making mistakes or needing to slow down the detoxification process because also you don't want to overwhelm yourself and you don't want to overwhelm your body. So unless there's any other questions, yeah, we we'll are going to leave it there. Leave it there. And um, thanks everybody. It was yeah, great to you. share with you all. 
let's wait a moment if there's any last question any last questions and otherwise you know you can always post them here and i'm happy to answer them thank you thank ellen you, thank you Thanks, for joining everybody. us much love bye bye, bye lisa